三四十ってややった。What is good, guys, and welcome to today's video. I am so pumped. I have never been to this place the entire time I've been living here in Japan, and we are going there today to see some of the rarest, biggest collection of just the coolest, sickest cars you've ever seen. Some of you may even be able to guess it in the comment section right now before we get there. But without further ado, we're driving the skyline today. Literally, like, look at the dust coming off this thing. She's been a bit neglected. So. Let's get to our destination and show you what's there. We're going to the guest hall. Ooh, you guys can probably guess where we are right now. It says it up on the sign. The Nissan Motor Company. This is the actual factory here in Zama. It's insane because you actually have to drive through like all the loading section where they're unloading crates of engines and car parts, dashboards, everything. Now we're moving into the guest hall here. Oh man, I'm excited. Oh my God. Yo, N13 Pulsar with the Langley tail lights. Oh my God. That's the car that I literally built with the CA18 in it. Dude, that was my first car, the Langley N13 Pulsar. I can't wait to show you. Holy sh For the first time in my life, I've opened my mouth and have absolutely no idea what to say or how to say what I think I want to say. Does that make sense? I have, there are so many cars here that I have dreamed of seeing all my entire life. Some cars I've seen before, but just seeing so many of them in this tier, this level, this grade, all in one place. Like I literally did, just did a post on Instagram. Like I did not realize I passed away last night and went to heaven. Like this is insane. You can probably see some of the stuff behind me. I don't even know where to start, so I think I'm just going to show you, start just showing you everything. This video is going to be hella long. It's probably going to be a 30, 40 minute long video. I don't care. I know you're going to watch it because if any of you guys are car enthusiasts like me, you know probably all of these cars in here. It's insane. Like I, I, I can't convey to you just how insane it really is. Hopefully this does it justice. Um, I probably need to see a heart doctor right now. My heart is beating like crazy. I'm so excited and hyped. Let's just get into it. <laughs> so let's start at this end and work our way through. As you can see, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. As far as you can see, it's just the most insane car collection I have ever seen in my life. Not just these race cars, but so many more. Start off here with some of the old Le Mans cars. This thing is super cool. It has the V6 in it, which is essentially, uh, I believe it was like the VG30. Yep, VG30 twin turbo. That's so cool. The whole thing only weighs 850 kilograms. Very, very cool. Man, that's sick. And this thing was making 500 kilowatts, 680 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. 8,000 RPM this thing was going to. So cool. And it kind of goes through all the different series here and all the different cars that they were building kind of based around this kind of era. And we saw some of these at display at the Nismo or Mori factory the other day. It's so cool. Obviously guys, I want to get into detail on every single car here and I would love to, but there is just so much like, and then look over here, there's some more. And then there's just more and more and layers and layers and rows and rows. So cool. So let's try and like just, this thing is so cool because it's just street drivable. R390 GT1, <sighs> so cool. I think the funniest thing about it as well is it's using 300 ZX lights, the same that are in the Diablo and the Z32s. Very, very cool, right? See the same identical tail, uh, sorry, headlights. This thing is so cool. Very similar headlight design in these as well. Kind of like the 300 ZX there. Oh man, I don't even know what to film, man. I guess that this car was uh, probably developed for homologation for this thing as well. So cool. Like you can see intercooler pipes coming out of the side skirt there for the turbos and stuff. It was just insane. Oh my God. There's so much here. I have like, and then it just keeps going on and on and on. We need to go through this row. What is this? N15, N14? I think at the top of my head, what is this? I was completely wrong. This is technically a P11 by the looks of it. It looked like a Pulsar from the front for me, but 
very very clean and cool sr20 powered thing was making 221 kilowatts 300 horsepower 8300 rpm Look at the size of those AP racing brakes on there. Thing is huge. All right, let's move on to something we kind of know something about. R33 GTR LM Edition. The rarest Skyline in existence, in my opinion. Very, very cool car. We saw this at the Nismo um, Global Headquarters on display about a month ago now, next to this beautiful thing as well. And then look at this bad boy. They got all the cool cars out. Oh man, so cool guys. 35 GTR, moving on to another 35 GTR. Let's just quickly skip through these because I mean, let's be honest, they're cool, but they're not as cool as the Pennzoil 34 GTR. Ah, guys, the, the JGTC. Oh, and then the 33, like this thing looks so baller. I oh, mean, I wish we could walk in between the cars at the rear, but that's one of the rules here. Look how thick it is in the rear there, guys. Seriously, and like the Wang game, there's like double Wang game on top of each other stitched together. <laughs> the SDP 32 GTR. Man, the JTC was racing 1998, this thing. Super cool. Oh man, just being able to stand here and look at these cars is an entirely, like, my cheeks are already sore from just smiling so much. This is insane. If anyone ever suffers from depression and they like cars, just take them here. They'll be cured from it. Like, seriously, <laughs> I don't know how could anyone be depressed walking through here. Look at this S14. I don't think I've ever seen such a wide body S14 in my life. This is cool. Oh, so sick. Everything stripped out in it. It's got a sequential. Fully stripped. Oh, man, the Wayne game. Everything about this is thick. Those rear tires are just nuts. Look at that. This looks very similar to the Yashio factory Golf Aero, the, the, the Golf R kit, how it comes up like this. On, that's exactly what the S15 uh, Yashio factory body kit does. That's very cool. I wonder if Okachan got some inspiration there. That's so sick. We got the 34 GT series race car here next to the 35. And there's another 35 edition back there. Man, there's so many cool cars here. We'll get a look at these later on, but right now I just want to cover all these race cars. This thing is seriously cool. Look, look at the wheels. Like even the wheels are just perfect. Hoshi knows, man. Like, oh my God. This Nissan March is the coolest thing in the world. Oh. You guys are literally go like, I, I, you guys always joke and say like, you know, take a shot every time Sam says sick or cool and stuff, but please don't go killing yourselves this video because th like, this isn't even the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to show you. <laughs> Gazelle S12 Sylvia. This thing is like full Kaido racer kind of style. It's so... And then this thing, I mean, if this isn't Kaido Racer, I don't know what is. So cool. Bluebird Super Silhouette. I don't know where to point my camera or what to say. <laughs> I'm a mess. DR30 Skyline. You guys know how much I love these things. But this is just, seriously, I love how... Um, Kato-san from Liberty Walk took this design for the R30 in this kind of Kaido racer style and then implemented it to a 34 for the new Liberty Walk body kit. This is literally amazing in person. This thing is the coolest car here probably. But I mean, we'll find some more that will probably outrank this, let's be honest. So cool. <laughs> I would hate to be the person parking these because like, look how close they get to the wall. Like, that's freaky, man. Look at the rear wheels. Like, and then they put that kind of cut hubcap on there with the moon. I guess you call them kind of moons with slits cut in them. Oh, it's so freaking cool. Wonder what wheels are under there. Something that's, it's a three-piece wheel. You can kind of see some mesh in there. Very cool. I don't even know where to begin, guys. Oh, my God. Let's look at the rally stuff. I don't know much about this. This is fairly new to the scene, I'm pretty sure. Oh man, look. Yo, this is Usain Bolt's GTR. 
special gold edition with the signature. There it is, guys. Very cool. Um, 35 GTR Z, 350Z, Fair Lady. This thing, uh, I don't know much about this kind of motorsport. Um, it's left-hand drive for obvious reason because I think it's only really like this doesn't really happen in Japan This kind of motorsport. This is in the States, but they race these around the track and do some cool jumps and stuff like that um, I'm sure you guys can tell me in the comment section the actual name of the official sport, but I have seen it like on YouTube occasionally Let's get into some stuff GTIR Pulsar all-wheel drive SR20 the baby GTR in the Nissan lineup this thing I don't know why there wasn't more made. I don't know why more people didn't get into them super cool cars I plan to own one one day because it's probably the only GTR kind of car that I'll ever be able to afford. <laughs> but yeah, SR20 powered, mounted like a front wheel drive northwest, full all wheel drive transmission and stuff. Super, super cool. Used a lot in rally. Moving on here. So you guys, things just kind of progress and get more and more insane. Got the Silvia 200SX here, the 300ZX uh, um, Fair Lady. This thing looks so cool. <laughs> I love... I love it that they literally like they they leave all the damage on there from the rallies like, There's messed up panels and dents and everything on these cars, but they just left them as they were. What is this thing? Oh the 240 RS oh, So cool. I think definitely this wasn't as cool as the s12. I just like all the old lights just kind of slapped on there Things just kind of progressed here. Oh, this is so sick Man like look at all the damage and stuff like things ripped off and scraped off like they could have repaired all that but they just slapped it back on there kind of straightened everything out left it there because it tells a story you know and like they even got like the original plates and stuff that they ran with it i guess so cool like you could probably get in there and put your nose and bury it in the seat and smell the driver's sweat from back in the day when they rode these <laughs> oh man this is this thing took a beating man and it's just like, look, the dodgy repairs they did to keep driving with the wire and the headlight. See what I mean? Like, this is, this is so cool that you can just see all this here. I hope they managed to finish it. Like, look, this thing's in some pretty bad shape. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, this thing took a beating. I wonder how they kept the hood closed. I guess they just kind of tried to like seal it shut with some wire or something like that so cool all these old zeds yeah I, I absolutely love it i know i'm repeating myself here but i love it that they left the damage on the fenders and stuff so cool this thing took a beating too jeez so cool oh we've seen this car before this thing was the very first one that they did rallies in and stuff very cool. Look at the damage they kept on it. They just paint over the damage on this one. Tells a story. That's sick. So my favorite cars are Nissan. Like, I'm not going to lie. And I had no idea that these cars existed. That Nissan ever had a, a, a part in making these. They look incredibly insane. V12s in them. Like, I didn't even know what these were used in. Japan's Grand Prix in 1968 overall winner was this car. That's cool. It's an R381. See, I didn't even know that these were... What is this old logo? Nissan? Datsun? I don't... I have no idea. That's so cool. I love that I can come to something like this and just learn something new about the company that I love. And I had no idea. You guys are probably like, how did you not know about these, Sam? But I literally didn't know. This is an R382 in 1969. Once again, overall winner. Dude, these cars were just killing it out there, I guess. They look so sick. Wow. Of course, you guys know the Hokoska. And then we've got a Ken Mary here. We've seen this one on display before at the global headquarters. Moving into now the Datsun Sunnies. Love the FRP fronts that cover up the headlights and all that kind of stuff. They don't really cover up the headlights, well, the headlights are all removed, but they just fill it in for aerodynamics. Very, very cool. The Cherry Coupe. Okachan used to own a Cherry, and he used to race it at Scuba 2000 back in the day. Same style. I'm going to take some pictures of this and send it to him. But how cool is the logo for the Cherry? The badge. So cool. 
You know what would be awesome? If one day I could find a cherry that's in good condition, like restore it, paint it Yashio factory pink, put an SR in it and give it to him like as a gift. That I'm sure he'd be mind blown about that. It'd be sick to do that like for his 70th birthday. We've got eight years guys, I know we can do it, let's do it. So they're about to do a demonstration and start up this car because it's fully still in running condition. Original Prince Skyline. This is gonna be cool. Ooh, look at the signature on the core support. That's cool. The suspense is killing me. Zero six, good mate. Actually sounds pretty good. Not gonna lie, that sounds pretty good. So taking a quick look now at these bad boys on display, we can actually walk behind these ones. Cal Sonic 32 GTR, right here. How sick is that? Oh! She thick boys. Mm-hmm. That's delicious. I kind of want to open the little flap there. <laughs> oh man, even this looks so good from the rear end. This is what I mean. Like I kind of like the 35 rear end. She looks good, right, boys? Oh, all right. We need to go get all those cars filmed as quickly as we can. There's so much here. This is so cool, right? We're allowed to sit in the B1 and get pictures, but the best thing is we get to wear some Nissan uniform, boys. Hopefully this fits me. We're gonna do this one hand in vlogging style. <sighs> Oi, Zach, come help a brother out. <laughs> Does this even fit you? Oh God. <laughs> oh, it hurts. But guys, I'm an official. <laughs> I'm an official Nissan staff member. I wonder if she'll let me wear this around the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you look like a hunchback. I have no idea what you're doing right now. So sure. I just want I just want every I just want to, I want the full experience, you know. This and stuff and Driving a BE1 in your BE1. in your Nissan jumper. Yeah. Wow, you've really peaked in life, haven't you, Sam? Yeah, I'm the staff, official Nissan staff. <laughs> We have a large size. <laughs> so let's go through all of these cars here now as quickly as we can. I will be stopping at some of the GTRs that are over on this side, like the 34s and things like that. But starting off here, we got some Laurels, the Grand Extra here. Not so sure what's so grand and extra about it. I'm probably going to Google that later. But moving through the skylines here. Let's go through the entire lineup. This is the UC211, 1980. Very cool. Going in through here is when kind of the, the, the shape kind of goes into these box lights, which is then obviously, which then ended at the 34 and went into the 35. As you can see here, R30. Moving on up to the HR30. Well, this one here is technically, what's this one? The KHR30 into the H30, HR30, then the DR30, which is one of my favorites. Going into the RHR30 XAE. What the hell were they doing with their naming convention back in the day? I have no idea. This is the DR30 that I'm in love with out of every like old chassis. I think that this is the sexiest, probably because my first car kind of started out with the Langley, uh, the N13 Pulsar, which we'll look at over there. And you can see the headlights are kind of similar to that, but I just love the old style. It's like a kind of, we're almost at the 31 era, but we're not, but you know, it's just super cool. So there's that. And then I kind of, my favorite, like the 31s do look so good though with these headlights. Oh man, so good. The HR31 is beautiful. But we flip around right now and make sure we don't miss any of these. Stasia or Tech Edition R33 entire drivetrain in this. It's a GTR station wagon. We got, what's this, a Pulsar? Oh, this is a P10. I keep getting the. So in Australia, the only things we had that looked like this were Pulsars. I'm sorry, I keep getting that mixed up. But, anyways, Stasia. Moving on to a Safero. These are the Safaris that I guess weren't really that popular. 
Um, these are the Seferos that were popular and this is probably the only Sefero that is still in Japan and not in New Zealand wrapped around a telegraph pole. I'm just like how many, if you're a New Zealander and you know what I'm referring to and you get the joke, comment down below because you know that that's actually probably truth. <laughs> Every Sefero has disappeared and they're all in New Zealand. Um, these things, very, very cool. Uh, RV20, same um, suspension setup as the S chassis, so very easy to get a lot of angle out of them, have some fun drifting and things like that. Moving into the Lorel, very famous C33 Lorel. Once again, RB20, a lot of people do 25 swaps in both of these cars. Same suspension setup as the S chassis, really easy for getting lots of angle and having a lot of fun. <sighs> Where do I begin? R34 GTR. Two here, the infamous Bayside Blue. And this color, I always get it wrong. Um, it's either, what is it, like Dragon's Breath or Silica or so, I don't know, but you guys know what I'm talking to about. This is the GTR M Spec Ner. Super, super rare. This would probably sell for 180, 200 grand. In this condition, which probably has like no kilometers on it, it's probably 500 grand because it's collector's standard, like kind of quality. Moving into the GTR V Spec two Bayside Blue here. Absolutely beautiful. Like, never seen one this clean in person before. Not a single mark on the front diffuser or anything. Factory OEM suspension still in there. Incredible. Moving into the 33 GTR. 33 four door. Was this the Ortec one though? Hang on a second here. No, that's just the uh, the GTS 25T, so uh, RB25 four-door. It's just weird that they put 33 GTR, RB25 four-door 33, and then another GTR there. It's kind of like, what's going on here? <laughs> um, actually, wow, I did not know that this is the Nurburg Time Attack Edition one. There you go, hmm, learn something new. And this one, is this anything special? Ah, oh, this is a V-Spec, nice. Very nice. Kind of tell, it's a little bit of a different of the front lip here. It's a bit wider and thicker. I didn't really realize that until I can see them side by side like that. A little bit different there on the indicators and the front kind of vents here on the bumper. Very, very cool. Moving here, we got a Maxima. Very nice. What is this thing? Triple S Bluebird. Very nice. Moving into another Bluebird. Bluebird. Um, marches or micros depending on where you're from in the, from in the world and then we kind of end up back to well let's ignore the cube all right i feel like <laughs> some people might not like this but i feel like that was one of nissan's mistakes <laughs> but it's okay they had some cool like four-wheel drive turbo ones over here um a k11 march or micro depending on where you're from in the world i love this it kind of looks like some weird like sailor moon thing like it's kind of cool that's just a little parking indicator so they can get really close to things and know where the front of their car is from the driver's um, position because you can't see your front bumper right from there so if you have this that comes straight up from your bumper you know how close you are to objects and things like that doing a terrible job filming sorry over here the pulsars hey something i actually know about <laughs> um so gtir we saw this before but in the rally edition sr20 guys very very cool looks like they bought this back now i did hear that nissan's been buying a lot of cars back for the heritage collection you can see the dashboard had a lot of things stuck to it this is probably one of those cars that they just bought and are now slowly going to go through restoring it so that's kind of cool very nice um this one here it's a sunny another pulsar this would be the n13 range i'm pretty sure here in japan yep n13 because this is what holden in australia was using for the holden astra in the n13 chassis so holden was buying these cars of Nissan changing a little bit about the headlights and stuff and the grills and calling them the Holden Astra in Australia. But we still had the N13 Pulsar that had more of a Langley front end than a Pulsar. There's another Sunny. In Australia, we called these something else that I can't remember right now. Um, but these were also very common that engines would come out of those and get swapped into the N13s. Moving along, these things are pretty cool. These vans, a lot of people in Japan actually do them up a lot. They're like the KEE 24s, I believe. Really cool kind of V6. Another triple S. Um, Bluebird four-door moving into some Zs here. Trying to go through this very quickly because time is short. Um, 280Z. Uh, this one here has got to be, almost looks like 
a 300ZX, like Z30, Z31? Yeah, that's what the plug says. What is this? Infinity Q45. Oh, okay, the badge completely threw me off. Just because of that weird rose kind of stuff pattern on there. Very cool. Moving through here, we got the Cedric, the Sovereign President. These things are cool. Very, very cool. Made for, you know, VIP kind of guys. Moving in through to some more Cedrics here. Skim through these. Some Glorias. Glorias are really cool. Leopards, Leopards are even Leopard or however you want to pronounce it. Um, VG30s are in them, Turbo. Very, very cool. Whew. Man, there's so many cool cars here. Hey, look, there's a Wild 32 there. GTR, Nismo edition, the plaque says. Very sexy and cleaner. Once again, the paint condition on these is just incredible. I don't know if they're respraying a lot of these cars with the factory colors, because I mean, we are in the factory that used to produce these cars. I don't know. 32 GTST. Moving into this thing. I have never actually seen one of these. Wow, I didn't know Nissan made this. Learn something new every day. MID4. MID4 2. Wow, 330 horsepower at 6800 RPM. It had the VG30 DETT in it, so twin turbo. Oh, huh. very unique. Very cool. Didn't know that. Then we're back to the Skylines. Let's flick over to the next row and go through all the S chassis there. Really enjoying my official Nissan uh, staff uniform right now that totally doesn't fit me. Another Nissan car that I didn't know existed. Very cool. Moving into the Langley. So this is essentially what the N13 Pulsar was for us in Australia, but the headlights looked a little bit different, the indicators were a bit different, and the grille was different. And I had all of these parts imported to Australia from Japan for my N13 Pulsar to replicate the same Langley car. And we can't walk in between the cars, unfortunately, but I can show you the rear. You can see it has a kind of skyline circle tail light there, and it was absolutely sexy. Now, these cars came out with really terrible engines in Australia, but you could swap a CA18 DET directly into them. The transmission would bolt straight up, and you'd have like, you could easily put a disco potato on them, tune them with a good ECU, make insane power, and in like a chassis that didn't even weigh 800 kilograms. Absolutely insane car. They, this is, I bought three of these, built them, parted them out, did a whole bunch of stupid stuff with them when I was younger. So this is kind of where it all started for me with these cars. Moving in over here is the Nissan XR, which actually came out with a CA18 DET in it. Sorry, DE, but a lot of people would do the turbo swap, the DETs on them. So you would actually get like engine mounts from this that would then bolt to the CA18 to then go into this car. All the engine bays and all the parts are pretty much identical between the two chassis and the chassis rails. The only thing is this was actually a coupe but you could get this little thing in the back there that would replace the coupe and turn it into almost like a station wagon. A pretty cool little car. Of course, front wheel drive, so unfortunately traction was always an issue and torque steer, but hey, a lot of people play with Honda Civics and uh, I used to play with Nissan Pulsars, N13s. Anyways, moving through here, we got some more Pulsars and Xs kind of here. One of the, I think this was the first Xer they made, which is the old school one with the soft top. Very cool. This thing that I don't even know what it is, I guess, like I, I, I call these the Pope car because the Pope could stand out of the roof and I don't know. Anyways, this thing is cool. It's sunny, a couple more sunny. So these are like, I guess, what they made after the old school sunnies we saw over there. Whew. Yeah, there's some nice ass chassis here. All right, let's go and look at these. So we've got some more bluebirds up here. Let's just look at this. So S15 convertible. Uh, let's... They're not a great car. They don't handle well or anything like that. Yes, they look cool. They have an S15 front. The chassis is completely different underneath. Doesn't handle well at all. So not a good car for motorsport, but looks cool. Good for your girlfriend kind of car. Sorry if that offends any guys that are into these. It's just, it is what it is. S14 Colkey. S13 Sylvia. 1989 original. So clean. The paint looks so good. And then um, Sylvia Q, S13, two-tone, seafoam green and gray, super rare, hard to find, very nice. S13, geez, those lights. Mm -hmm. Moving along to the S12s now, which I learned something new today. Um, I used to think that every S12 was just kind of like a gazelle, but um, yeah, obviously wrong, because this is the only one labeled as a gazelle, because uh, 
it actually says Gazelle, which is the RSX edition of the S12, Silvia, which uh, had a CA18 DUT in there. Very, very cool. I like them digging this kind of grill here. I'm not sure what that's about, but that's kind of sick. Very nice. Moving along, uh, I guess patrols over here. These are called patrols here, right? That's kind of cool to see one of these here. Ooh, Cedric. A lot of guys grab these and uh, I think we saw one the other day with the Kaido races when they rolled in like Bosozoku kind of style. We've got a Gloria. Ooh, Ken Mary GTRs. Yo, GTX, that's cool. Old school Pulsar. Oh man. This is so cool. There's just so much here. There's no way that I can get every single car in this video guys and we still have another whole row to go oh my god i just saw something how did i forget to show you this could you imagine looking in the rear view mirror of your car and seeing this thing coming after you with the lights on and then the guy gets out and defects you <laughs> what the hell this is a genuine, this was a police car. Nissan's done this for as long as I can remember um, all throughout the years. This badge is actually, um, they've obviously had gotten special permission to keep this on the car. I'd say this is probably still owned by the police and they probably like just get to store it here. Um, but you legally can't have this on any car. This badge is like super illegal. They don't care if you have the lights or anything like that. They mainly care if you have this badge because that's the badge of like authentic authenticity that proves that that's a police car owned by the police and the government and stuff so if you have an like if you've stolen one of these off a police car or if you have one in possession for some reason you can get into a lot of trouble here in japan like a lot of trouble so a lot of people just paint them on or make fake ones um, but yeah the that's a real one so there's probably some special agreement there but yeah this is a real police car was used back in the day 100 percent super cool Moving on, you can see some more Fair Lady Zeds here. And probably the cleanest S30s I've ever seen in my life. Very, very cool. This thing's nice too. Whew. 300ZX. VG30 twin turbo, baby. All right, let's keep going. I guess this is where it all started, guys. 1930s. Datsun 12 Phaeton. Phaeton? Phaeton? And the Datsun 14 Roadster, but your Mazda didn't like them using that name. This thing's so cool! Hell yeah, it'd be sick to turn that into like a little hot rod. Stretch it out, twin turbos, something crazy in the front, I don't know. Anyways, I don't know much about these old Datsuns, it's just cool. Oh man, look how cute this little fire truck is. I wish I could ring the bell, that'd be sick. Oh, it's just so cool seeing these compared to like those insane race cars over there. We need to probably do like a before and after kind of thing with that. <laughs> so cool. And moving down here, man, these old school princes look so good. Prince sedans, the Prince Skyline Deluxe, which is where Nissan claims is where like the whole, you know, building a four door Skyline has come. They wanted to go back to their roots and rebuild these four door cars as Skylines and stuff. This thing's kind of cool. Like a station wagon kind of thing. This thing's clean, man. Beautiful. And over here, what is this little thing? Why is there like a bar around it like that? It's like a little bumper car of some kind? <laughs> what is this? It's called the Datsun Baby. AF8N. Oh, made a whole 5.5 kilowatts, 7.5 horsepower, 5,000 RPM. I'm surprised this thing even got to 5,000 RPM. I just don't understand why it has this around it. Maybe that's just to protect it. This is pretty insane. This thing's cool. Why has it got all this Japanese written down the side of it like that? Let's have a quick look. What's it say here? It's a Datsun Bluebird 1200 Deluxe. Oh, doesn't really say why it has that Japanese on there. Interesting. Moving down through here, whole bunch of bluebirds on this side. As you guys can see, it just goes on and on and on. Whoa, this is cool. This one's covered in Japanese too. Why? Oh, hang on. This is the car offered to Japanese delegation to the third international games held in Mexico City in 1967. Drawn on the body are autographs of the players. There you go. Maybe that's probably why that one's got all of that on there too. That's sick. All the signed autographs. Mexico. 
that's kind of cool. I love that they've got like history like that on there. Oh, the skylines continue down here into Hokoskas. Damn. Jeez, that is clean, boys. Look at this Cedric. That's so freaking cool. So baller. Imagine rocking up to pick up your girl on that. Nee, look at the special. Cedric special. Oh man, next time my parents visit, I'm taking my dad here. This thing's cool, that's in 2000. That's sick. Getting to some more emergency vehicles, old fire trucks. That's sick. Look at all the old pump gear and stuff in the back. <laughs> Cab light. There you go. Little Nissan Junior. Another Junior. I wonder what engines were in these old trucks. Very, very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. All right, guys. Wish me luck. I hope I don't get anything lame. Calling it right now, Infinity. No, don't you dare. Infinity. 100%. Wait. Oh, I didn't do it enough. One more, one more yen. Oh, it's something, it's something, it's something blue. It's something blue. 34 GTR. Oh, okay. Sion GTR. Yatta! That's so incredible. Mizurashi this car. Eh. Well, I think that kind of sums up today here at the Nissan Heritage Museum uh, or Heritage Collection. I don't, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, hands down. I think the next coolest moment of my life, most meaningful moment of my life will probably be when I have my first child and I'm not talking about Zach. <laughs> but that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please tell me in the comment section, what was your favorite car here? And anything I was asking you guys about, if you knew more information about, please tell me. I wanna know more about all these cars. I'm definitely gonna be visiting here more often um, because I, there's just so much I didn't get to look at for the two hours we've been here. And it doesn't feel like I've been here for two hours. Feels like I've only been here for 15 minutes. It is insane what is here and some things are always alternating and changing and, and moving around so there's always something different here i'm so mind blown and i really hope that you guys enjoyed this as much as i did um, my cheeks are so sore from smiling so much there's literally so much here it's insane now as i was saying this is the nissan heritage collection slash museum and it's open to the public you guys can come and visit it and check it out too but you can't just rock up and it's not open every single day. Google search Nissan, Nissan Heritage Collection or Museum and you should be able to find it and then what you need to do is essentially book the tour. Um, staff here, they don't really speak English. Sometimes if you're lucky, you might get one of them that does speak English um, and it's pretty much a free tour though. You get to kind of walk around and check out everything you want um, once you're in this section of the museum. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoy. This is definitely insane. If you wanna visit here, like I said, book online, get your time and everything scheduled in and get here. It's, you have to experience this in Japan if you ever make it. It's incredible. Thanks for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, leave us a comment, and think about subscribing. It really helps. Peace out, guys. Jamata. This is so depressing, guys. They're literally locking down the, the warehouse where the whole collection is. I feel like we should be playing a song right now. Hello darkness, my old friend.